Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a radical equation. We have square root of x plus square root of x plus the square root of x minus the square root of x equals root 6 plus root 2, and we're going to be solving for x values. So let's see how we can solve these kinds of problems. For those of you who've done some trigonometry, the expression on the right hand side should somewhat be familiar to you if you think about it. Anyways, when we have a radical equation, most of the time we square both sides because obviously we want to eliminate the radicals as much as possible. Let's go ahead and square both sides and let's see where this takes us. I have something like a plus b squared and that's going to be a squared plus b squared plus 2ab. So the first term is going to be x plus root x. The second term is going to be b squared, which is x minus root x. I usually write the squares first. Plus the 2ab is just going to be 2 times the square root of x plus square root of x times the square root of x minus the square root of x. Okay? And this is equal to the root 6 plus root 2 squared. Let's go ahead and simplify the left-hand side, and then we're going to set it equal to the right-hand side squared next. Okay? Root x cancels out. Nice. And then we get x plus x, which is 2x. And then this expression, like these two expressions, can be multiplied under the same radical. And that basically gives us from difference of two squares, x squared minus x. Which we can write as 2 times the square root of x squared minus x. Great. Now since this expression is simplified a great deal, let's go ahead and turn this into the right hand side. Let's simplify the right hand side. Right hand side is going to give us 6 plus 2 plus 2 times root 6 times root 2, which is root 12. And root 12 can actually be written as 2 root 3. If you think about it, this can be factored as 4 times 3. And this will become an 8. So from here, we basically get 8 plus 2 root 3. And of course, at this point, we can go ahead and divide both sides by 2, right? And that gives us x plus the square root of x squared minus x equals 4 plus root 3. Great. Now, what do you do next? Our goal is to solve this equation for x, right? So we can do a couple different things. For example, we can try to compare the left-hand side and the right-hand side, just assuming that, okay, if x is equal to 4, is this expression going to equal 3? Unfortunately, that's not the case, right? As you can see here, it just doesn't work like that. By the way, uh, this was 2 root 3, I forgot to write. This is supposed to be 4 root 3, so I'm going to have to add a 4 here, and that should be a 4 plus 2 root 3, right? That will probably change things a little bit. Okay, so again, my assumption is if x is 4, does this become the whole expression, including the radical, does that equal 2 root 3? Let's find out. If x equal to 4, we get the square root of 4 squared minus 4, which is the square root of 16 minus 4, which is 12, and that's actually equal to 2 root 3. So, that was the right assumption, right on there, but it doesn't always work, obviously, right? But in this case, in this particular case, it seemed to work because the problem was arranged that way. Make sense? So, x equals 4 is the solution. Great. I already said that, right? Well, uh, what if it didn't work? What would you do, right? So let's go ahead and take it from here. We have a radical equation, and how do you solve radical equations? You isolate the radical and square both sides. Let's go ahead and subtract x from both sides and square both sides, and that gives us following. Uh, we could probably take this as a whole, so we don't have to deal with a plus b plus c squared. If you square the left-hand side, you get x squared minus x, and the right-hand side is going to give us a squared, which is 4 plus 2 root 3 squared, let's write it that way first, plus x squared, minus 2 times x times 4 plus 2 root 3. Awesome. Now x squared cancels out, nice, because that leaves us with a linear equation, right? So let's go ahead and expand some stuff. Uh, we could probably put this on the left-hand side with a positive coefficient like this, and then subtract x from it, which is the minus x. It transfers, it's going to equal this quantity. And when you square this, you're going to get 16 plus 12 plus double those and multiply the product. Uh, I mean, multiply and then double the product. It's going to be 16 root 3. Awesome. 
Now let's go ahead and solve this problem. How do we solve it? Simplify as much as possible. We can actually factor out an x. That's going to give us 2 times 4 plus 2 root 3 minus 1 equals 28 plus 16 root 3. Awesome. From here, we should do the following. Multiply, simplify. So it's going to be 8 minus 1, which is 7. 2 times 2 root 3 is going to be 4 root 3. And then it's going to be 28 plus 16 root 3. And finally, this gives us the following. And can we simplify this? Well, pretend you didn't know the answer. Yes, because you can factor out a 4 here. That's going to give you 7 plus 4 root 3. And the bottom, 7 plus 4 root 3, obviously that's not 0. So we can go ahead and cancel that out, leaving us with x equals 4. The fact that this turned into a linear equation also means that there is only one solution. But let's go ahead and check it out. Is this actually going to work? If x is equal to 4, you're going to get something like 4 plus the square root of 4, which is 2. And then inside the second one, 4 minus the square root of 4, which is 2. This is going to be root 6 plus root 2 as in the original equation. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.